Welcome uh, to the open day of the Royal Conservatoire in The Hague. Uh, we had a very interesting day until now with lots of individual lessons and information. Uh, we, we, we gave information to lots of people. And now uh, we are here for you, those of you who watch the YouTube stream. Uh, we have a few people as audience here, but they are supposed to be silent. <laughs> but around this table we have a singing teacher, Noah Frenkel. We have a third year bachelor's student, Sterre de Creux. Fourth year. A fourth year? Fourth year. You are fourth year. <laughs> yes, oh, that's all, I always Thank forget you. that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But then I go to Sandra Sinevali, who is a master's student, master's student one. And then we have Ruth Fraser, who is our coordinator and our project leader. And I am Monica Dame, I am the head of the vocal department. Uh, and we try to give as many information as possible to you in the coming 45 minutes. And I think you're most interested in listening to teachers and students. I can understand that, but I do a very short introduction into the curriculum. Uh, our singing department has two, yeah, how do you say that? Two parts. We have classical singing and we have early music singing. Uh, that doesn't say that there is a sharp division between classical singing and early music singing nowadays. There are many singers that do both. Uh, I know even a singer that sings Wagner and Bach. And we have a singer here who is one of our teachers, Noah Frenkel, who sings Bach and contemporary music and everything what is in between. Uh, what is important uh, if you look at the curriculum is that we have six main subject singing teachers, and we have four early music specialists. They work all close together, which I think is very important. Uh, they know each other very well. They know the students. They know also each other's students. And I think in the whole, on the whole, we have a very pleasant atmosphere in our department, and it has something to do also with the teachers, that they like each other. They talk to each other, and the students I think the students take over that atmosphere in a way, and it influences both. You are, uh, you are nicking? Very true. Very true. <laughs> okay, that is what we want to hear, of course. That is what we want to hear. Uh, so, the, uh, our two curricula, they both have, for the bachelor at least, they have four main parts. We have the artistic development, that is the singing lessons, the lessons with the coach pianist, the group lessons, with a singing teacher. We have musicianship skills. That is um, musica, yeah, that is for the classical department. It's, uh, for instance, rhythm, rhythm class, it's all skills and, uh, and analysis, all skills and improvisation. For the early music, it's also uh, historical keyboard skills, for instance, and it's ornamentation and diminution. We have academic skills, for the first year bachelor, that is always anatomy and phonetics. Learn your, to know your instruments. Uh, it's historical development of the voice. Uh, it's critical music studies for early music and for classical singers. Academic skills, part of academic skills is uh, the, ah, I make a mistake, I see. That's already, historical development already is part of the academic skills. Um, and we have professional preparation, and professional preparation always is a very interesting thing, because when I started here years ago, I thought, how strange, professional preparation. Everything you do here, of course, is prepares you for professional practice. But we have two m important main lines, and the one line is the stage skills, uh, or drama skills, uh, from the first year onwards. Uh, we start from, with body work and, for instance, methods of acting. In the fourth year, we do making your own performance, for instance, and that is exactly what it says. You have to make a small performance in which you are responsible for everything. It's finding your repertoire, the story you want to tell the audience, uh, things like how to use light, uh, how to act, everything. And we have also career skills, which we start already in the first year. And that is about the practical things, is how to write a CV, 
It's how to uh, write a motivation letter, for instance. And it goes on with practical things as how do I start my own company and lots of other subjects. And next to the curriculum, of course, we have our projects. We have projects for people, for, for students from all years. We try to, to, yeah, to uh, select the repertoire so that there is something in for first years, there's something in for fourth year bachelor, there's something in for second year master. And what we think is very important, we ask all the students to always audition for projects. Which means that even if you are first year and you think, oh, it's all too difficult for me, we, we tell you, just come, because it's very important that you learn what it is to audition, that you learn what it is to step into a room with a committee and being very nervous, because that is what you're going to do auditioning a lot in your professional life. And so if you have six years in the conservatoire feeling how it works, I think it helps you a lot. And I see Sandra, you are now saying yes. Absolutely. I think just the experience to get out there and sing and indeed your legs are shaking the first few times. And you're not going to get in, but you get so much positive feedback. You train yourself, you know, you advance and hopefully one day you'll be there and you'll get one of these auditions. <laughs> Still difficult in the first year of master, but <laughs> sometimes. Ruth, I gave the word to you now. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about projects and stage skills and things in, in other parts of this talk. Um, but sticking with the curriculum now, um, you've both got interesting backgrounds because, Stere, you came from a different institution to ours and you're now a fourth year bachelor. And Sandra, you did the full bachelor with us and are now in the masters. Um, how much freedom do you have as students to focus um, on your chosen area within the curriculum? Can you design it to, to how you want or can you... Um, choose different things that you, you want to do or do you, you like to stick the way it is? Can I, go? I found uh, surprisingly, because coming from the Estonian system, which is quite the opposite, here we have a lot of freedom. And also because I had done a lot of uh, music history, a lot of theory already previously, I found a lot of things were repeating. The chance to ask for exemptions, for instance, uh, to focus really on singing, that was really nice. And yeah, in, in that sense, you can really design your own education, you can ask for what you want, but you have to, of course, know. You have to have a clear vision of what you want and what you like. Yeah. Great, thanks. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, I think this school is particularly open to um, giving very different kind of singers a chance, in the sense that we have singers that really flourish in an area by Verdi or Puccini. But there are also singers that are very at home in very early repertoire. So I feel this school really uh, has a very wide variety of of kinds of singers, and um, it also shows in the fact that we have a very strong early music department with which you can uh, work closely together. So if that's your thing, you go there, you find your friends there to make a little ensemble with. Um, but we also have a strong um, composition department, right? So um, I also got in touch with a young composer from that department and. You can also decide to go there and to discover how it is to, to make new music, contemporary music. So there are a lot of opportunities to discover different areas and to dive deeper into that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big strength of, of this school also. Um, yeah. Thank you. You made a really nice link for me to ask Noah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about uh, the VOCO project, the vocal composition project, which obviously you're a main subject teacher, but you're also teaching on or guiding students in the vocal project. Can you say something a bit about that? Yeah, the vocal project is a collaboration between the composition department and the singing department uh, in which the second year singers are the main part of the project and the composers that are interested in writing for them are writing short pieces for maybe a singer and one or two maybe instruments. And in this process, uh, myself together with one of the composition teachers, this year it's Mike and us. We guide both uh, groups or, or the different duos uh, from what is it that the composer is trying to achieve? 
how to see a score as a singer that I've never seen before. Maybe it's graphic, maybe it has some things that, you know. And how is it to be a part of the creative process? I find that this is such an important thing for singers to realize that Mozart and Monteverdi and Brahms and Rossini, you know, and every classical composers we all adore, were living composers. Uh, actually, some of the names that I mentioned worked with specific singers whom they knew. So we just make the creative process uh, up front. And in the process, we, we all learn from each other. So what is, what is the possibility of the singer? What is the possibility of the composer? How can we help both sides to create? And finally, we create a, a concert. So that's the project. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, and we talked a bit about, obviously, the freedom that you have in the curriculum. But do you also have uh, freedom and example for making changes in the department? So, like, if you want, if there needs to be changes in the curriculum, um, how do we you talk mean about the that? Student panel. That, that's yes. exactly what I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I feel, for picking that up. Uh, I've been in the student panel, I think, from the very first year that I came here, and I find it absolutely amazing. Uh, lots of freedom to say what we like, and it's all anonymous in the way that if there is a real problem, we never have to be scared that, you know, it, it re reflects badly back on ourselves. Or I feel like I can say anything that I feel I want to say. Can you just explain a little bit for the people who don't know what the student panel is? So there are two students selected from each year and we gather and once. Who, who selects the students? Our students ourselves, of course. And I personally always try to ask my course mates if they have any issues, any problems, any questions that they would like to bring up in the panel, and then I like to bring them. And we meet once every, I think, two, two three times a year. Yeah. Depends on how busy we are. Uh, mostly online recently, but also live. And there is cake. <laughs> Ruth always brings cake. That's nice. Come to the Hague. There Come is to the cake. Hague. Yeah. There is cake. Actually, cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's the bottom line. Yeah. So yeah, it's always very open and nice, and we're always friendly towards each other and very supportive. And it's nice. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, we'll move on a little bit. So I'll ask Noah if she can kindly vacate the seat for Sara to come <coughs> join us. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about being in the first year what it's like to be, uh, Sarah is one of our first year students. Would you want to introduce yourself? Sorry? Do you want to introduce yourself or? Well, I probably um, just did it for you. Yes, okay. I'm Sara de los Campos and yeah. I'm a first year student. <laughs> first year bachelor. And Sandra is a first year again as a master student. Um, so just ask a little bit about how, how's the first year going so far? Well, it's for very me, open. yes, it's, it's very open, but uh, for me it's been great until now. Um, listening to you two talking about the curricula and also stare about how broad it is. I've been having great time to, to have a lot of information in what's being a classical singer. I had the time to network, but also to uh, interact with the early music people and the jazz people. And uh, that's been just so great because I, I feel like I've already seen an improvement in, uh, in the way I make music. And that's, that's really great, yes. Nice, thank you. I can maybe uh, reminisce a little bit about my first year here because for me it was, I don't know, did you come from the Netherlands or? No. You moved here also because for me it was, you know, <laughs> first, first day of moving indeed into a different country and I felt really, in a way, it was, you know, the first year's the open week, everything, you were brought into this, you were introduced to different departments and different people. It was very like, woo, so much going on and your head is full of so much stuff. And time flies, I have to say, because you're having fun in the school. And being now in master, I'm in a way happy that I already did the four years and I didn't come straight into master because now I know the school and I can take my time and really take what I, what I need for myself as an artist from this school. Because master is even more than bachelor uh, here. You have to design your own education. But I suppose we get to that uh, later in the discussion. We, we might, if we have more time, yeah. go back. Yeah, but I think it's it's yeah. important that you say some things because I talked about the curriculum, of course, for the bachelor, but that you, the you experience now in what we still call our new master program because we changed it a lot yeah. the last two years. So can you so in, tell us a bit? Uh, it is uh, divided into three parts, our master studies. And for me, it was very clear when I read the Master of Music Handbook already how it is all connected. You have your artistic development, of course. 
you have uh, your research, and then you have your uh, PR professional integration activity. And it's a sort of a triangle that is supposed to design you as an artist. And it's all connected, and it makes a lot of sense for me, because whatever I struggle with personally as a singer is what I can use, what I can research, and what I can use later as an outcome for my PIA. So it's all like, you know, I call it more a circle than a triangle, mm -hmm. but it makes a lot of sense for me. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell a bit more about what the PI is? Because we know it, but it sounds a bit strange, <laughs> I think. Professional integration activity. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, these words don't say anything if you don't <laughs> know what they mean. Basically, you are going to design a project and you get help in uh, you know, project management and all this uh, financial stuff also. And for me, it's going to be, for instance, an opera concert uh, with a little improvisational element because I want it to be a little bit different. But some people, they do, they work with composers, they make this whole new pieces. Uh, some people, they do uh, dancing and this whole, you know, it's, it's up to you what you want to do, but it's usually an, an, uh, a concert or a, yeah. Yeah, and you are coached by somebody coming from coach. the professional yes. world. Yeah. That is also important because that is, we see it all also as a link to the professional world and yeah, a, a further introduction also to that world. And preferably you can take your project later and sell it outside when you've graduated, yeah. which is you know, a nice way to leap into professional world. And, and your research, what's your experience in research? Now, because for lots of yeah. singers that is the difficult part also. For me it was mainly to do with drama and stage presence because I'm really into opera and I've gotten a lot of feedback from teachers and my own teacher that I sometimes do a lot of generic things like this <laughs> <laughs> and use opera hands when I sing so I'm trying to get rid of that I'm trying to find how a singer can you know optimize physical movement in a way that is more genuine at the same time connecting it to your inner emotions and what is the limit? Where can I go so deep that I don't start to cry, but I can still sing nicely? And and I really want to connect my research with my PIA so that you know they support and they help each other, and I can use the workshops and the rehearsals for my research and and so on. So it's or organic. Yes, that's my plan. Okay. Sounds really interesting, actually. Yes, <laughs> um, and connected, slightly connected to that. Um, obviously, doing the PIA is the professional integration activity. And we have this, in the bachelors, we have four years trajectory of career skills, mm -hmm. kind of professional skills. Um, and we start off in the first year with a working group voice, um, then followed in the second year with an intensive boot camp, um, entrepreneurship boot camp. Did you did that? Did you? That was in my third year. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have business of music, um, audition training, and PPP, all in the bachelor. And then obviously in the master, you've got the project management, the peer, and that sort of thing. So we're really trying to prepare you for the, you know, the outside world now. Um, what is, obviously you've been through it as well. You're just started in the working group voice and you're still in it. Yes. Uh, what are your experiences of the sort of the PPP course, so the career skills courses that we have in school? Maybe we start off with, with Sara, you're yeah. in the very I basic mean, working group of voice. Doing it for this first semester, and uh, I think it's, uh, you said it's in one of the, of the courses. We think that maybe it's too early to start thinking about that stuff in the first year of the bachelor, but it's actually not. We've been already doing some networking and trying to work on what Monica was saying, writing our CV, knowing how to act professionally as singers. And it's already been helpful now, um, not just as a preparation for the future, but also today in, in our formation to know how to contact with the professional world. I think it's, it's really helpful uh, to have it from the first day, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I miss. I didn't do the boot camp, and I didn't okay. do the because I came in later in oh, yeah. school. Oh yeah, explain. You you came in in a higher year. Yeah. Yes. So, so the t uh, tell our I, uh, watchers. I should our viewers. Yeah. Yeah. Our <laughs> beamers. Our um, streamers. Yeah. So I studied for two years in Belgium in a different school, and then I decided to come here. I auditioned, and then I came in in the second year. So I missed some subjects of the first year, um, so I didn't do that boot camp, and I also didn't do the um, 
uh, voice groups. A working group, yeah, the working yeah. group yeah. voice. Um, but last year we got um, several uh, meetings on taxes and stuff, very um, dry stuff, but also very important as a singer in the Netherlands to know how to do these things because um, also as an expat you come here in the Netherlands and there's a whole system of taxes and all kinds of uh, fines yeah. you can get <laughs> if you do things yeah. wrong. Monica's yes. the only one that knows, we're all like, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very overwhelming. Yeah. And also that is provided by the school. We have talks um, mm -hmm. with somebody telling us how to do that and what if we want to be uh, an independent uh, musician here, how does that work? So I had that and that was very, very useful. Mm -hmm. Um, and also what Ruth said before, um, the fact that we have auditions before each project is very useful because we are also asked to send in our CV and a cover letter, uh, which also means that we write quite a lot of these cover letters and it also makes it easier for us when we do a real audition mm -hmm. to know, okay, how does that work? What do we write? How do we write in a professional but still personal way because mm -hmm. we still want to show our mm -hmm or personality. And it's also nice because Ruth um, offers the opportunity to get feedback on, on our CV and, and cover letters. So that's also a big uh, asset of, of this uh, yeah, curriculum. Do you have anything to add? No, we're just grateful for you. <laughs> it's very nice of you. I'll pay, I'll pay you later. <laughs> give, me, give you some more cake. Um, <laughs> that is a nice leap to our next topic, mm -hmm. and I might ask Sarah to swap with Yap, we've, got, we've invited many people today, um, to talk about projects, projects, auditions, uh, stage skills. Um, so as Monica mentioned before, we have lots of projects throughout the year, we do auditions for as many as we can, um, and the and applications uh, with CV, cover letter, and then feedback. Uh, what is the application process like? Um, is it difficult? Is it annoying that I have to I make you write something new every single time you want to audition even though we have seven <laughs> auditions within like two months or something didn't we in September we had so yeah, many auditions yes. for projects <laughs> literally the first day of school this year mm. we had an audition yes. um, what's what's the whole the process of the, the applying for projects and things like the last year because he's not yes um, I think it's nice because you have to write this cover letter about yeah, why you think you, you, this project is good for you and why you're good for the project. And I think it's a nice moment for me to reflect on what I'm doing, what kinds of projects I've done in the past few months and how this project would fit into my development in a certain style because we have early music projects, uh, sometimes an opera project. We have all these different kinds of projects which, yeah, don't necessarily connect to each other but connect to the different parts mm -hmm. of the different styles I'm exploring as a singer and so I think it's good that we write that cover letter every time because, because and also update your CV so you can really see like how how you're doing and every time have a little mm -hmm. moment to think about that. And also, we don't have to do all the auditions. So it's not like <laughs> there are a lot of opportunities, but if we decide to do only one or two, because we want to explore that field, for example, an early music project, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's also, it's also good. It's not that we're overwhelmed with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, things we have to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And speaking of auditions, what's, the, what's your experience uh, in the auditions? Like on an audition day, what's it, what's it like? Um, yeah, for me, it's actually, it feels professional as if we have to, uh, you know, uh, we can't just go there in our jumpers and our uh, nice. That's happened. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so it feels like a professional environment, but still uh, being carried by the, the kind faces of Monica and Ruth that are also sitting there in the, in the panel. So we are still aware of the fact that we have space to improve. We don't have to be a finished product when we go to these auditions. Um, but, you know, we do feel kind of that adrenaline kick because there is an external person almost always there. So it's a good combo of both, I feel, for me. Now, what was also said before, the, the importance of getting that adrenaline and getting yourself out there, 
trains you to be used to it. And also, I don't remember who that was that said that actually, if you keep performing, your body adjusts to it, and then you are less nervous over time. This is why Corona is so difficult for some singers, because then you don't get used to it again, then you're so nervous. But yes, force yourself to go out there, force yourself to audition. You know, it not, it's not going to go right the first time, but, you know then you get used to it, that's important. I do remember the first few auditions we had this year, everybody was just so happy to just sing again. Sing, yeah. They weren't, they weren't super yeah. nervous actually because they were just so happy to sing. In front of people. Yeah, in front of people. Live people. Yeah, rather than yeah. singing to a screen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, definitely true. Um, so were there any memorable projects for you? Or for example, Sandra, you've just been in one that wasn't. I was so sad that it didn't continue, of course. Uh, we had Michael Chance, uh, Alcina, yeah. And my, my, my still favorite first that one that was in was uh, The Fairy Queen with Michael oh, yeah. Chance. I think that was in my third year or second yeah, year. I don't know. Yeah. And it was also with a lot of people and Michael Chance always gives, you know, the chance to all the singers to do something and, and you will have a lot to do because they're always so colorful, there's, there's a lot of action going on, just to be on stage, learn how to be on stage. Ruth gives us a small uh, lecture about how to do uh, stage makeup uh, and we get all the costumes and, and it's just super nice. And also getting to, I feel always with the projects, I get to know all the singers that I never know. Mm. I see all these new faces on school. There's like people who jump in from second or third year. And then I'm like, who's that? And then during the projects, I'm like, ah, we're best buddies. You know, it's, it's super nice. And yeah. Yeah, you get to meet a lot of students in your group lesson. Because obviously the group awesome. lessons are from all the same students from your teacher. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And then you'll meet students obviously in your year, but the projects really bring... And we meet instrumentalists, of course. people together, and you meet yeah. instrumentalists as well. Mm -hmm. They were very good in this project, and they were also very upset yeah. when on Tuesday we had to pull the plug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and meeting other people is also there's another thing because you don't you not only have the projects and the, and the standard curriculum, but you also have electives and minors, for instance. That is also an, a very important part, I think, of your education. Mm -hmm. And we have we have two uh, important minors. That is, if you are doing classical singing as your main subject, you can do the minor early music singing, and the other way around. If you're a classical mm -hmm. sing, uh, if you are an early music singer, you can do a classical minor. What's your experience in a minor? Mm. Who goes first? Mm. <laughs> um, yes, well, for me, it's been, it's been great because I came in here when I was 19 and I thought, okay, I'm going to study with Franz Fiesedier, my teacher, and then that, well, that was classical singing. And then I discovered in my first year with the Fairy Queen, where I also uh, participated, that I yeah, liked early music so much. And then um, it's really easy to start a minor, do an audition, and, and, and then get these lessons with the early music specialists and be in more early music projects. And it's been a way for me to just uh, experience all these different styles and these, these older styles. And um, yeah, that's been great for me. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, and if you do an elective, of course, you have lots of choices. So you, you were talking about meeting other students other singing students, but that is also a possibility, having an elective or, or, or non-singing minor, mm -hmm. to meet other people in the conservatoire. And I think that's, that's also really important because, yeah, you, you already talked about meeting the composers and work together with them. Mm -hmm. And it's a thing that we think is really important. Well, I did, for instance, the education minor. And there it's everyone, uh, different, yeah. different departments, really, really nice. And we had to also do a project together and you, again, meet people, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You are, all give me great links to my next Good. topics every yeah. time. Um, <laughs> my next topic is about community feeling and internationalization. Ah, oh. um, does any of you, it feels a bit awkward for me to say that we have a really nice department and everybody gets along, but we kind of do. Uh, I agree, yeah. <laughs> um, do any of you want to say something a, a bit about that? We hear there's, I mean, we hear there's a lot of camaraderie. We see it as well. We see that everybody... Mm -hmm seems to get along. Can you explain it from a, a student perspective, what, what it's, it's like here? I think it's also not just our department, it's the KC in mm -hmm. general. Uh, and I've heard stories from other schools, which might not be true, but I feel here there's such brotherly, just warmness and everyone is super supportive and open and it's very, very international also. 
And I'm not afraid to talk about my, I don't know, my difficulties uh, as an artist or as a singer with others. I don't feel like they judge me or anything ever, like something like that. It's very friendly, super open. And I also think I wrote that in my reflection letter when I graduated or whatever, that this has been one of the most open and, and heartwarming experiences for me in the school. Yeah. And it's hard to learn Dutch because everyone is international. <laughs> but yeah, about it, yeah. Very, very international. Yeah, very but, many cultures. Yeah. Super yeah. nice. It's also interesting for the people who, yeah. who are watching us that we almost do all the lessons in English. Every, yeah. And I think the only exception is if you are Dutch and your singing teacher is Dutch, then yeah. that is the lesson that you speak Dutch. But I think that's only, yeah, mm -hmm. the only lesson, more or less. Mm -hmm. Um, so speaking of that in internationalization, obviously we've got a lot of international students. Um, does that bring challenges, benefits? What's it, what's it like being an international student? What's it like um, not being an international student? <laughs> <laughs> the one non-international here. Yeah. Well, for me, it's been nice to get into contact with these people from all around uh, Europe, but the world, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And to yeah talk to them and and find out wh why yeah where do they come from not not in a literal sense but in this sense of how do they get into classical music and and how do they get to the Hague and and I've yeah it's just really nice to get to know these people and and to uh, hear about their experiences and and yeah uh, yeah I think. 19% of the conservatory is Dutch at this point, or something. About like that, that yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. But I felt very at home here uh, with all these people from everywhere. And uh, yeah. I mean, not to say anything bad about Dutch people or anything, but I feel like, <laughs> this, inter <laughs> but I feel like this international okay. crowd makes it yeah. very open minded and everything is accepted. And I, I feel like that's a plus, a really big plus that it's such a big international community. I feel like The Hague in general is very international. And it's easy to blend in here as an expat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's also less overwhelming if you see you come into a school uh, where almost everybody is, is coming from a different country, so you, you feel less lonely, right? Because there are, yeah. of course, a lot of different things about the Netherlands and in your home country, but everybody is going through that same, yeah. uh, that same thing. And of course, you will never be in the cafeteria um, uh, not understanding a conversation because everybody is speaking English and you won't have people, everybody speaking Dutch and you're the only Spanish one there, for yes. example. So you won't have that, which is a very good thing. Thank you. Um, I would like to, in the nicest way possible, ask you to leave. <laughs> and oh, then, this. yes, and then, well, one stair can stay. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. Thank you. And then ask Noah and Maurice to join us. If that's okay. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, so Maurice is, we've met Noah before, one of our main subject singer teachers, and Maurice is one of our coach pianists. Um, and can, I'm just talking a bit about coach pianist, main subject teacher, and the combination teaching team and how it all works. Can you just briefly explain the difference in your roles? Yes. You can start. Yes, okay. Um, <laughs> our roles are in a way uh, different that, um, of course, if you are going to sing, um, very often um, you have to start with the technique. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that is what you learn mostly, or actually completely, in, in your singing lesson uh, with your main teacher. Um, when you come to the coaching lesson, uh, we don't work technically, but we work more um, um, we look at the style of a piece, structure. Um, of course, what is very important is communicating with each other, com how you com uh, communicate with the audience. Um, um, we dive into the text, um, uh, of course, in opera, in the, in the story, into the story, um, uh, but uh, in art song, in the poems, into the poems. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, you are doing. Uh, part of that also in your um, uh, in your singing lesson, but 
yeah, let's be honest, uh, there is a fair amount of time that goes into the technical aspect of singing during your um, uh, main subject lesson. So, nice. And yeah, okay. I, I think that, of course, it's true what you say. And the more I teach, the more I realize how it's not what people think that there is a singing teacher, but it's a community thing. It takes, a, like they say, it takes a village to raise a child. So I think that what is true, um, and I spoke about it with one of the people that came for a trial lesson today, if you're in an opera production as a singer, you know, you might get a lot of input from a stage director, from the conductor, from a pianist that is in rehearsal. So we, uh, we share responsibility, we share yep. the, the joy and the work together as a, and I always like to, to talk, if, if Maurice and I are talking about a student, we, which we share, because there are several teachers, several pianists, then we are the team of this uh, student, and Maurice would have a different perspective that you get from the piano, from the perspective of making literally chamber music with the singer, whereas I come uh, from always from the outside in the sense of teaching the technique, also talking about music, so the aspects can be similar, but we bring different angles, which makes it a more complete education. So, and I think it's very needed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I also think um, another aspect is um, that um, if a student has to um, work with a pianist, mm -hmm. um, well, you have to make up your mind. How, uh, sometimes I ask, what tempo would you like? Uh, that's different, uh, different uh, when there is a pianist sitting or that you are singing on your own in a singing lesson without piano. It's completely different because you have to know um, um, how to make clear to, uh, to a pianist what tempo you would like. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those simple things are already difficult. So it's also, uh, uh, for, uh, well, for part, it's also realization of some things you're not uh, aware of, um, that they are that important to be clear in the communication. Mm -hmm. And how do you think students should approach their lessons with, with you both? Um, how should they be prepared? Well, it, it's, it's uh, in our job as a coach pianist, it's very funny because, well, it already says coach pianist. <laughs> so I am a coach, but also a pianist. <laughs> and, uh, and when I am on stage, I'm not a coach anymore. On, on stage, we, uh, we coach pianists transform into um, the equal Master partners. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's say equal par uh, musical partners. That's, um, and of course, in a lesson, there's also room for, for a student. If a student has a strong idea about a, a song, um, he or she can tell that. Um, but uh, of course, as a coach, you also try to guide a little bit. But on stage, yeah, we are just two performers, and that's really nice. You know each other very well from the lessons, but on stage, yeah, that aspect changes. Can I, can I say something something else? Because you were we were talking about sharing a student. Hey, you are a coach yeah. pianist, yeah. you are a teacher, but we also have the system that uh, students can share, can have two teachers. Right. So that you have also that sharing with another singing teacher. Yeah, which is I find very special. I I was teaching uh, or in communication with other universities, and it seems to be practically very rare or non-existent. So I think that it's worth mentioning. Uh, it means that somebody, for example, there is my student as well as Katrin's student. Um, it means that you get lessons, suddenly I speak to you, Stere. Hello. <laughs> you get <le> hello. <laughs> you get lessons from both of your, of your teachers. Uh, most of the time, because I feel that in terms of singing philosophy and how we listen, that we share so much between the, the, the different teachers that teach main subject teacher here. But of course, there are some differences. So for me, there are, it depends very much on the student. I think it's, there is a big advantage because you, I think that you get maybe even the same things said in different ways. Uh, in case people are confused, which happened. Uh, if they are confused, we try to be the bridge and create uh, a communication. Sometimes I would call one of my colleagues and say, okay, how you, would you describe legato? Because this student was thinking, you know, and then we, we just try to find the words so that we can work together. 
Of course, uh, my early music uh, singers uh, have already some other singers. So there is a kind of a collaboration. But I also want to refer, if you allow me, to what we said before about uh, how to approach, how to come prepared for the lessons. I think what I like to think and what I hear also from the curriculum and what we try to do here is that there are two almost opposing things that we try to do. One is this is a school where people are allowed and are encouraged to be young artists, to not know, to fail, to do auditions and not pass them, to, to learn, to break the voice on the way to get a technique, on the way to improve your musical talent. So all of that is the developing part. And on the other hand of that, we have all this pref uh, preparation for the career, thinking how to be a professional, how to... And I think that if... I always think that if you, if you get that as our student, then you're doing really well. If you get the difference between what does it mean to be a professional alongside the fact that you might be improvising or not knowing and you didn't figure yourself out as, a, as an artist, I think then you're really great because you allow yourself to experiment and on the other hand, you already train the muscle which we all need in this profession, especially this day and age of knowing what to do. So I, I very much hope that also students that come and, and communication is very important, that they come and they say, okay, I, I was doing this and that with Maurice, you know, we try to, and now I'm doing that with you, how can we combine that, what are the subjects of so communication all the time, experimenting, and on the other hand, really from day one deciding that you're going to be a professional, that you, you came here, you know, you mean business, you, you really want to be a singer, you really want to, to flourish when you finish the school. Um, yeah. I think you just gave a really good closing statement. Oh, okay. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask another question, but I think that no, really, I that's think a really it's... good, strong yeah. um, way to end our discussion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. All very the people much. that are thank present. You. All the people and present. All the people that are watching. And everybody behind the scenes on the cameras and the audio. Thank you very much. <laughs>